Hey, it's Dallas, and welcome to the first ever director's vlog. You know, a lot of the videos that we do are sometimes shot months in advance before you see them. This is more real time. So each week I'm gonna be giving you updates on what we're doing, a look ahead at what's coming next, behind the scenes of how the show is made and what it is that goes into this show even when we're not actually producing it. But there's a whole lot of stuff that goes on, obviously in between each episode uh, that we're shooting. So you'll get a chance to see all of that uh, more immediate. So make sure you like and subscribe because then you'll be able to see when it is we've got new episodes of the vlog or any of our other videos. It really does make a difference. And so the more you watch of each video makes a difference, the more you like and subscribe and comment. Uh, YouTube th then rewards those videos and it can get out to more and more people. So make sure you do that. It really does make a difference. And uh, let us know what you want to see, what you want to hear. If you have questions, uh, I'll answer them in future videos. So just comment below with the kind of things you want to see on these updates, uh, the things that you know you maybe aren't getting from our usual uh, means of communication. And then also questions, you know, if you have questions about the show or anything, uh, I will answer some of our more frequently asked ones in future videos. One of the other cool things that I'll be doing is interviewing a cast or crew member. So each week I will be taking a cast or crew member and asking them about their perspective on The Chosen and hearing from them. You'll get to know them a lot better. For example, later in this uh, episode, uh, you're going to hear my interview with George Xanthus, who plays John the Disciple. Yes, John the Disciple who Jesus loves. Uh, one of the more interesting characters in the Gospels. You saw glimpses of him in episodes one through four. You're going to see even more in episodes five through eight, and then even more in future episodes. So I'm going to introduce you to George, and we'll, we'll talk to him for a few minutes, and you'll get a chance to see kind of what his perspective is on all this. So first things first is just the update on where we're at. As you know, as you hopefully know, The Chosen is available now on the app. We released that a few weeks ago. You just go to the App Store or Google Play. You download The Chosen. We're easy to find. And you can not only watch it on your phone or have your kids watch it on their phones, it's free, it's easy, you know, you can be watching within minutes, but you can also easily cast it to your TV. And so whether, if you've got a Roku, for example, you don't need a subscription to anything. You can just hook your TV up to your Roku, to your phone, and immediately be watching within minutes on Roku. Uh, all the instructions are on the app, and pretty soon we're also going to have it on Fire Stick. Uh, this is all new technology. So yes, the bad news is, we're not on Netflix or a TV station or for, you know, released by some major studio. The good news is we're not on Netflix or a TV station or released by some major studio because you now have a more direct access to the show. It's free, you don't need a subscription to anything. You just need the app. And it's a new way of doing things. So be patient with us, grow with us as we expand this. You know, this show is outside the system. It was financed outside the system. It's now being released outside the system. And so we wanna make that relationship directly with you. You can help uh, future episodes and seasons by downloading the app, watching the episodes, and then if you like them, you can, of course, click on the gift store, and that's how we really are able to finance future episodes and seasons is through purchases of the DVD, purchases of the devotional book, uh, you can get t-shirts, all that kind of stuff. We give you those links in the, in the description. I don't want to be a salesman the whole time, but just want to remind you that that is how we get this show going uh, in the future. So we're also uh, in the middle of editing. I actually just finished my editing process where we do what's called picture locks. So the picture now is locked. So all the visuals of episodes one through four in terms of where they're edited are done. Now we're doing visual effects. So our visual effects supervisor, Chris, is working with all his team to do any CGI that we need or any replacements. So for example, if we're shooting a scene and you see something in the background, we can you know erase that if something wasn't supposed to be there or we can enhance uh, the horizon line to make it look more like first century Israel. Also, we're doing color correction, which is where in, um, our director of photography, Akis Konstantikopoulos, try saying that 10 times fast, where he goes in and works to adjust the brightness, the color, all of that stuff to make sure that it's as consistent and then also as vibrant as we want to make it so that you can enjoy it even more. And then we're also doing audio correction. So I'm actually going to Los Angeles at the end of October. And for those three days, we are going to be finalizing all of the audio. I will be overseeing and approving all of the final visuals. And those episodes will be done about halfway through the last week of October. Then they're gonna be mastered and they're gonna be sent off to be replicated for DVD and for streaming for the release of episodes five through eight, Thanksgiving. That is the goal. We have no reason to believe we're not gonna make that goal. It's gonna be difficult, but I believe that we can do it. And uh, the music, by the way, the music's also being done. Yes, Dan Hasseltine um, and uh, Matt Nelson, our composers, are about a week and a half, two weeks away from completing the score. And if you saw episodes one through four, the score is just phenomenal. 
scores even better this time around. Episodes five through eight, there are moments when I watch these scenes and listen to the music that they're doing where tears are streaming down my face because I'm so excited about it. I did this poll on Facebook, on our fan club page, which if you, you know, you can go to our Facebook page, you just click on, you know, you look for the chosen. It's a group where you can post anything you want as well. So you're, you're not just responding to whatever we post and you can interact with other fans. They're crazy over there. I love it. They're so passionate about the show. Uh, we call it, kind of call them the Chosen Army because they are just on fire. In fact, I'm sure many of you are watching right now. I want you to go to that fan club page if not already and you can see their passion for it. But I also posted this question where I asked, what are you looking most forward to in episodes five through eight? So when episode four ended, and if you haven't seen it yet, you need to go watch episodes one through four right now. If you're not in the U.S., I apologize. It will be available next year. Uh, as you know, episode four ended with each of our characters facing some sort of question or some sort of incomplete storyline. So, for example, Simon Peter, who's just met Jesus, now has to go home and tell his wife what happened and that he's giving everything up to follow Christ. Matthew, the tax collector, witnessed this miracle. How is he going to react to that? What's he going to say? and do in response to something that he can't explain. Nicodemus is in John the Baptist's dungeon cell, and he's asking him questions, wants to know about the miracles that uh, he's been hearing about, and one that he's even seen, and he's wondering if John the Baptist might actually be the Messiah. So you're going to get to see that uh, played out right at the beginning of episode five. Then, of course, there's uh, Mary Magdalene, and Mary Magdalene's story has reached kind of its crescendo in some ways. I mean, she's been healed and redeemed by uh, Jesus. But now that she's a different person, what does that look like moving forward? How does she find comfort amidst this group of followers of Jesus, mostly men? Uh, and so that story is going to be interesting too. And so I asked, what are people looking most forward to? So you can comment on that below if you want to kind of chime in on what you're most looking forward to. But I want to talk about what I'm most looking forward to you seeing, because I've now seen episodes five through eight many, many times. And there are so many things that are so exciting about each of these characters. And so I was thinking about that and I came up with Matthew. You are going to be blown away, I believe, in episodes five through eight from Paris Patel's performance as Matthew and then also just seeing Matthew's character. Again, I'm not giving anything away in the Gospels. We know that the first time we see Matthew is when Jesus is walking by the tax collector booth and he says, follow me, and Matthew drops everything and follows him. We decided to work our way backwards and see what could have led Matthew to do that. And in our process of research, we kind of thought maybe Matthew had Asperger's syndrome just because he's a facts guy from chapter one of his Gospel is just all a genealogy. Uh, he's a numbers guy because he's a tax collector. And he also didn't seem to mind being socially outcast as a tax collector because when you choose to be a tax collector, you're basically you know, going to be hated by the fellow Jews and disrespected by the Romans. And Matthew was comfortable with that. And so I, I know a lot about Asperger's syndrome because of my family and even I have a touch of it myself. And so our portrayal of Matthew in episodes one through four, I believe, was a really cool setup for what's coming next. But as you see Matthew respond to what it is that he saw and how he actually has to communicate that to Quintus and Gaius, his Roman uh, bosses, for lack of a better term. And then, of course, how he kind of works through it himself. You know, he's essentially turned his back on his faith in many ways by becoming a tax collector. He's got an inside look and he's witnessed something that few people have seen, and that's a miracle, which in indicates that maybe what he's been thinking and planning and, you know, researching on his own is all about to be turned upside down. And so I can't wait for you to see that because the moments that lead up to the stuff that we know from Scripture uh, are just as compelling as that moment itself. And then that moment itself becomes even more exciting when you actually see it. You can comment below on, and let us know what you're most excited to see, uh, both from episodes five through eight and maybe from fu for future seasons as well. Because in a couple weeks, Ryan Swanson and Tyler Thompson, my co-writers, are going to be joining me at my home for our next writer's retreat where we are going to be plotting out all of season two. This is what we did for season one. We spent a couple days plotting everything out, plotting out the characters and the arcs and all that. And that's what we're gonna be doing for season two. And I will have another video as we get closer to that. And you're gonna see, you'll get to see kind of an inside look at that process. It's gonna be a lot of fun. All right, so let me take you now to my interview with George Xanthus, who plays John, the disciple. Check this out, I think you'll get a lot out of it. All right, so George, uh, first of all, how does it feel to be the first interview subject uh, on this director's blog, this world famous director's blog that probably has about a couple hundred viewers so far? Uh, it's actually, I was just thinking that when you were telling me before that I was the first one, I'm like, okay, here we go. I'm either a prototype or, I, uh, or it's an, an incredible honor. So I'm gonna take both of those because yeah. I'm obsessed with those concepts. Yes, I think, unfortunately, it's neither one. It's kind of just in the middle. So, uh, sorry to disappoint <laughs> you. 
Um, so first of all, uh, for our you know fans of the show who are very very passionate, uh, they know you are playing John the Disciple. Uh, I first want to just get to know a little bit about you real quick. Um, obviously, from your accent, it's clear you're from Australia. Give us a little bit of background of what you're doing in Australia and now what you're hoping to do here in the States. Yeah, I um, started acting when I was like maybe 18, as soon as I left school, but I, I got my education and all that. So, uh, you know, that's like the typical Greek sort of uh, parent sort of thing where it's like, oh, I'll get the education, everything. And I think that was good because it gave me a, that sort of intellectual uh, approach to acting and then, you know, doing theater and all that i got uh, accustomed to comedy a lot and in australia i i started out doing comedy basically but then i think as a lot of comedians do you, you shift into drama and then you know after i started doing a lot of drama projects i was thinking to myself you know there's just a lot more to do in america so yeah i found my way over i, I won the green card lottery which is an incredibly lucky thing a lot of people do get it but um yeah that, that's how i found my way over here and the the chosen was the first job i, I booked on american soil i've done an, another american job but i technically booked that uh, in australia and new zealand so technically the chosen is my first entry into the american market let's just say i feel like when you came in to audition how long had you been in the states it wasn't that long was it no no i was like crashing on couches at that stage as well so uh it was really lucky my, my friend lives in culver city it's right around the corner from where we auditioned so like i think you called me in a couple of times for a, a, a few characters so it was uh it was easy for me to just walk down the road and and yeah, that's maybe why I was so prepared. I remember you were impressed with how quickly I got the lines down. But right, um, so yeah. do you remember which two characters you auditioned for? So you came in the first day, like mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Do you remember which character that was? Yeah, that was uh, that was Simon. I, I I came in for. See, you merchants, you get twice the help out at sea. I need uh, twice the help here on land. <laughs> Excuse me, John. John, I was unaware that the. Hammer changed its policy on allowing in children. And then the second character I came in for was um, uh, Quintus. So, <clears throat> a Jew tax collector and his escort demand to see the Praetor of Judea. It's urgent, they say, a matter of uh, life and death. <clears throat> Last night was very, very hot indeed. Uh. Well, you came in and read for Simon, and I immediately liked you. I had someone else, I mean, I, I think Shahar by that point was already starting to, like, I think I'd seen him already and was excited about Shahar and felt like he fit that part. But you gave a great read and I said, can you come back tomorrow and read for Quintus? And the thing that really impressed me was that, like like you mentioned, you, you came back the next day and had the entire scene memorized and were very prepared and uh, brought a completely unique thing to the character, completely different from what Simon was. So... Uh, it was really cool. And then, of course, you got uh, cast as neither of those roles. Um, yeah. But I remember my wife was very passionate um, about you, uh, as I was. But she said that the character of John um, is small and, you know, has, has less screen time in the first four episodes, a little bit more in five through eight, but ultimately becomes obviously a very important character. Uh, and so that's why, you know, even though it was a smaller role, uh, I, I wanted to kind of get you in at the beginning uh, so that we could build into it. So on the character yeah. of John, it's a person who lived in, you know, 2000 years ago. So how was your approach to that role when you found out that you got it? This is something I say all the time with with a character. You don't you want to bring a version of yourself into it. It doesn't mean you're playing yourself in every role, but I think that's what makes it personal to you. And there, there are aspects, there's a lot of aspects of John that are similar to me. And there's one, it's actually going back to that intellectual thing. He's he, w w The stuff that I read, the character traits and characteristics, he seemed to be someone that was quite intellectual. And, you know, I think that there, there were, like he, he seemed to, he grasped a lot of the knowledge and, and, and uh, I think there was something to do with scripture or something like that. But there's a scene that I don't want to ruin anything. There's a scene between John and Simon, which sort of, shows that John uh, early on does get things quite quickly, even though he's, you know, he's a brother of thunder and he can be, you know, a little bit uh, temperamental and sort of jump the gun a bit. When he is instructed, he sort of gets it. And it's great because, it's, as, as you mentioned, John's not that big in the first four or maybe even the next four, but he grows into it. And I think that's sort of indicative of his character and what I've learned about it and what I've brought to it. And something that's similar with me, like once you learn, you start to sort of get into it and you start to get comfortable. And it's going to be great to see John do that in the series as well. 
um, right. because yeah, just that thing between Simon and John, I think that's going to show that 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 dynamic. Yeah, there's a scene where Simon in episode six, where Simon is is frustrated because he can't figure out what his role is in the group. He's scared because he, well, sc- scared for Jesus, nervous for Jesus that Jesus is starting to attract negative attention, and your character is encouraging of him. And one of the things that I find interesting about John, and we talked a lot about this, the difference between John and James, your twin brother, um, is James talks a lot in his book from the Bible about the law and doing the right thing. And John, when he wrote his book in the Bible, was uh, as much about some of the emotional aspects of it and the spiritual aspects of it and referred to himself often as the disciple who Jesus loved. And we talked uh, also about how the fact that John seemed to be eager to please. So he mentions in the Gospels that he outran Simon, you know, when, when they, at the end of John, when they go to, to visit the tomb. He's like, Simon got a head start, but John, you know, beat him. And so we, we slipped yeah. that into the scene when you're, when you're running to the boat at the end of episode four, where James, it's fast. Uh, yeah, <laughs> James starts off ahead of you. And, and we said, all right, John's got to be fast. We got to illustrate that from the beginning. Talk about the, also the, the relationship between you and, and James. I think the scene in, uh, in episode four, when Jesus calls you and James, can you talk a little bit about that moment? Because we show how you start to go and James stops you. And just elaborate on that just a little bit. Uh, I remember it was because we've actually changed James as the, the actor playing James. I remember it was Cheyenne at the time and he was in deeper water. And I remember going, I'm going to beat him to this boat. And it was, I don't know if it was John saying that or it was George. And again, that's that thing. You bring a bit of your character into it. And he's like, I'm totally going to like, I'm going to get to the boat. So okay, I'm pretty fast. I'm like, it's some pretty deep water. There. I don't care how long your legs are. Yeah. But there is that, like you said, there's that eagerness. And it's kind of funny because the, like I was saying before, you know, these first four episodes, there's this eagerness about John. But and, and as you were saying in his books, he, he's he's that, that more uh, emotional sort of approach. He, he, it, there must be a calming aspect of, of meeting Jesus that sort of comes over John, because in this moment when he, when he gets called by Jesus, he's sort of eager to go. Uh, and, and if I'm not mistaken, James is the elder brother. Yeah, that's how we portrayed it. Actually, I've, I've read up on that as well. So yeah, that, that's what I that's what I had read, but I wasn't sure. Um, but we, we see this initial John as someone who's like eager to go. And then as the series goes on, John's going to start getting a little bit more calm about those sort of things. And again, like, you know, in episodes five to eight, we're going to see that in that moment with with Simon. But also it's like this thing of where it's sort of Zebedee is passing the baton over to Jesus. I mean, there's a great scene that we do when we're leaving home. Again, I don't want to spoil or anything, but there's just a nice moment between Zebedee and John and his and, and James. He puts he actually puts uh, Nick, the actor, put his, his, his arm on my shoulder. And there was like a look of go. This is what you have to do now. Not to say go too often. That's the catchphrase for Zebedee. Oh. We're moving on from one sort of father figure to the next. Uh, and although, you know, Jesus is, I'm not sure, too much older than us, not as much as what Zebedee would be. It's still a sort of, it's a teacher. And that's how we sort of, we, we learned how to fish off Zebedee. And it's just, it really helps when you've got a great actor as well to work off. I mean, we were, whether it was Kian playing James or Cheyenne, both James and John were listening to Zebedee and were just trying to please him. And then we just move on to Jesus. It's a really smooth transition. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. My final question is to talk about the future. Um, you know, the, the future of this show, uh, we're hoping to do this for six, seven, eight seasons. You and I have talked about even just your spiritual journey of learning more about this character, learning more about the Gospels, um, but also just the future of this show. and getting to hear from fans and kind of the interaction that we have between the show and our fan base and how it's impacting people and starting to impact people around the world. Yeah. I mean, it's funny. We, we have a little group chat with the cast. I'm sure people would love to know that, that we have our little group chats and we, we often post some of the gifts and memes that get made. They're so, they're so funny. Like, um, I don't want to say I'm surprised because it sounds like I'm like, Oh, you know, I wouldn't expect people to be good at, at, at making memes or anything, but they're just really funny. They're really good. Um, but uh, I mean, obviously, there's so much to look forward to with you, John. Um, like you said, it's, and I knew, like, you, you wouldn't even have, you wouldn't have to say it. Like, John's not that, 
that sort of uh, we don't hear much from him in the first four or, or maybe even eight. But I, I know enough about John and, and 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 the Bible and stuff to know that yeah, we're we're going to start to see more from him. So I, of course I'm excited as as the person playing John to explore that. And also, like I was saying, there's a journey for John. You know, I, I get to sort of go from excited, you know, sort of um, erratic for not really erratic, but then to someone who then learns. You know, it's a, there's there's a really cool arc there, which is great for any actor. Any actor will want to sink their teeth into that. And yeah, like I'm I'm also looking forward to more more and more people seeing the show. I think that the show is is a it has a universal voice, and I, I say this a lot. There's there is a spiritual revolution going on. You can watch the show, and it's just so real and grounded that I think people of all creeds and and backgrounds will just enjoy it because it's so real. And, and that's a that's a credit to the writers and 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 creators of the show. Um, but that's why I enjoyed it as well. And the actors love that part of it. It's just very real and grounded. And we just want to go on this real journey and we want to invite as many people as possible on that journey. Great. Thank you so much. And uh, to our fans and to you who are watching right now, thank you so much for this uh, first vlog and for joining us on this. And uh, we will see you next week.